Welcome to the Billings Seventh-day Adventist Church online worship service. I'm Pastor Stephen Carlisle, and I'm so glad that you're here with us today. I want to extend a very warm welcome, a happy Sabbath, and a happy Mother's Day weekend. This service, we've got a few things in store for moms, so I hope that you'll be blessed today. If you're live with us today, I invite you to sign into that chat box and let us know where you're worshiping from. You can click that heart for virtual amen, and you can also click on that live prayer button, and that will take you to a private chat to be able to share your prayer requests. It's now time to check out your greetings today of saying Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath from the doctors. Happy, happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Hey, everyone. Wishing you another happy Sabbath. Hope you guys are doing well. Continuing to pray for you and uh, look forward to seeing you all soon. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath from Jill and Kobe. Have a good week. Happy Sabbath, church family. Love you all. <laughs> Thank you so much for sending in those Happy Sabbath videos. Please keep them coming. We'd love to include you on the live stream. It's now time for our children's story. So kids, just take a little bit step in front of your parents and check out this video created just for you. <laughs> Good morning, kids. This week, I want to take a few minutes to recognize our mothers. If you're watching this video right now, you have a mother. Maybe she's in the room with you. Maybe she's somewhere else. But either way, she gave you life, and that alone is pretty special. You know, in Exodus chapter 20, we're given the Ten Commandments. And specifically in verse 12, it talks about honoring our father and our mother. And pro tip, since tomorrow is Mother's Day, we're gonna focus on honoring our mother. We can do this by showing her love and respect. For example, if you have school or homework that's been assigned to you, you can do it with a positive attitude rather than a negative one. Another way you might honor your mother could be, well, if she sends your brother or your sister to ask you to do something, you can choose to obey rather than disobey even if you don't particularly want to listen to your sibling. And it's okay if it takes you a second to make up your mind. Your final decision is what matters most. A third example might be, well, picking up toys around the house or just simply doing chores without having to be asked. Of course, there are many other examples but I hope this is a reminder to you guys to take a few minutes this Mother's Day to think of some things that make your mom special to you. And to all you ladies out there, whether you have kids or not, I can guarantee that at one point in time or another, you've played a motherly role in someone else's life. So to all of you, Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day! Day. It's been six weeks since we've had students on our campus. I miss the hustle and bustle and joy of them being around me every day. I miss the sounds of music and worship in the chapel. In the science room, students would be working on electrical circuits and they would be talking in groups. In this room, students would be discussing ancient history and talking about world politics. Here in the English room, you would often see students standing at these whiteboards, writing out sentences, and then talking to each other on either side, working out the perfect way to say something. Here in the auto shop, students would be working over their engines and learning practical skills how to take care of their cars. Here in the wood shop, students would be working on their practical skills, like working with wood. I miss having the students in their dorm rooms, running up and down the halls, talking to each other, studying together. 
the gym is always full. Lots of activity. People playing basketball, people playing volleyball, people kicking a ball around in here. Eventually, students are going to come back to campus, but we're going to need your help for them to come back. We need your help to raise $250,000 to keep this program going. I understand that Christian education is expensive, but think about it as an investment to in the lives of our students. You're teaching them Christian values, learning about grace and love. The old adage that it takes a village to raise a kid is true. You are part of that village. It is that sort of village that has kept this school alive for well over a hundred years. People have been making sacrifices in the lives of our students for many, many, many years. And we thank you so much for being a part of that. We are so looking forward to our students coming back and being part of our lives again and filling our classrooms with joy and exuberance. With your help, we can bring students back and they can be in these classrooms and in the gym and in the auto shop. Please step out in faith with us and thank you so much for your generosity, your prayer and your time. Today's scripture reading is from Deuteronomy 31.6, and the Bible says, Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you, nor forsake you. Deuteronomy 31.6. I just pray that we can remember this promise from the Lord and not be afraid and not ever forget that he will never forsake us. Please kneel with me as we have prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for another opportunity to worship you, to come before you, even though we're not necessarily in the same physical location together. Lord, you know that we are your church we are together in ties of love with each other and we come together as a body to worship you lord to give you praise and to give you the glory that you deserve we thank you lord for your incredible gift of your son the salvation and the hope that his life and death and resurrection offers each one of us the incredible promises of the Holy Spirit to fill each one of us, Lord, so that we can love as you love, so that we can have your spirit within us. We can have the spirit of forgiveness and love and service that only you can give. Lord, we're, we're sinful, fallen people, Lord. We can do nothing good of our own, but we call on you today that you fill us and give us the ability to be good and to do good to do your will, to lead others to you, Lord. We thank you so much for that promise, that opportunity that we have to partake in your spirit. Lord, right now, there's so much fear, there's so much skepticism, there's so much anxiety going around this world, and we just ask you to help us remember your promises of safety, and of courage and of strength and of the ability not to have to fear. We just ask for that strength and courage right now and help us not forget. We just ask that you be with each one of our members who are hurting. Lord, I think of the Lamaster family as they bury Julian this Sabbath. Please be with Iva and the rest of the family. Be with the church family. We're all grieving with her right now. It's a sad time for us. Lord, you know you're sad right along with us. Please comfort us, comfort the family. Lord, please be with each one of us and help us to know how we can give strength to each one of the rest of the church family, how we can express love and come together and show the rest of the community how much we love each other so that they'll want to experience that love for you and for each other and to be part of our community. 
Lord, we praise you and thank you for everything you've done. I ask that you be with Pastor Stephen and his family. Be with Pastor as he uh, speaks with us today. Help his words to come directly from you and speak to our hearts. Help us to remember what he says so that we can be changed radically to become more like you, Lord, and to have that peace that only you give us and that hope of something so much better to come. We praise you and we thank you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. To those of you who lost a child this year, we mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the badge of food stains, we appreciate you. To those who've experienced loss through miscarriage, failed adoptions, or running away, we mourn with you. To those of you who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with pokes, prods, tears, and disappointment, we walk with you. Forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't intend to make it harder than it is. To those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms, we need you. To those who have disappointments, heartache, or distance with your own children, we sit with you. To those of you who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate with you. To those who lost their mothers this year, we grieve with you. To those who've experienced abuse at the hands of your own mother, we acknowledge your experience. To those who lived through driving tests, medical tests, and the overall testing of motherhood, we are better for having you in our midst. To those who are single and long to be married and mothering your own children, we mourn that life has not turned out the way you longed for it to be. To those of you who envisioned lavishing love on grandchildren, yet that dream is not to be, we grieve with you. To those who've placed children up for adoption, we commend you for your selflessness and remember how you hold that child in your heart. To those who step parent, we walk with you on these complex paths. To those who will have emptier nests in the upcoming year, we grieve and rejoice with you. And to those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. This Mother's Day, we walk with you. Mothering is not for the faint of heart, and we have real warriors in our midst. We remember you, and we love you. As a boy, I had a favorite Bible character. His name, Samson. What little boy didn't love the idea of having super strength? To carry massive gates or push over pillars or wrestle lions. It was one of those things that you just really wanted. But then as you get older and you actually read the story of Samson in the book of Judges, you recognize, wait a minute, maybe I don't wanna be this guy. I mean, this guy makes a lot of poor choices. But then you fast forward to the New Testament, and in the book of Hebrews, you find him as part of the hall of faith. I mean, how does Samson, a guy who, yes, has been called by God, and yes, he's been equipped by God, but make such poor choices, end up there? Over the last couple of weeks, we've been exploring this idea of not being too far. The idea that God calls us right where we are. He equips us sends us out to do 
what he's called us to do. We looked at the conversion of Saul, and God basically said that Saul, the guy who would be named Paul, right? The guy who persecuted Christians said, you are a chosen instrument. And then we look at Moses, who had killed a guy and was out shepherding his father-in-law's flock, and God shows up and says, I will be with you. Today, we take a look at Samson, but not just Samson, but the one who raised him. The story of Samson starts in Judges 13, when Manoah's wife, who's nameless in the story, is barren but is visited by an angel of the Lord. The angel tells her that she's going to have a child, but there will be very specific instructions on how she's to live and how to raise the boy. The boy's to be a Nazarite, which means he can't cut his hair, he can't have anything off the vine, he can't touch any dead animals. Nazarite vow was something that usually someone would vow for a specific period of time, but in this case it would be his entire life. We know that, the, that his mom actually did what she was supposed to do. Now just because Samson's mom did everything that she was supposed to do doesn't mean that Samson would do all that he was supposed to do. She was faithful, eh, he, he just tended to do what he wanted to do when he wanted to do it. Whether it was who he was with, what he ate, what he drank, what he did, he kind of did his own thing. Ultimately, I believe it was pride and selfishness that led Samson down the path that he chose to go down. It was that path that led him to Delilah. And it was that path that led him to a place where he would be the ultimate entertainment to the Philistines as his eyes were gouged out and he was a slave to mock. There was a party that was happening and everybody was there. And they brought Samson out so they could make fun of him. And it was in that time where Samson had time to think and ultimately humbled that his, he rested his hands upon the pillars or the support structures of that building. He cried out these words, Lord, remember me just one more time. Lord, remember me one more time. Now, if it were you and me and someone had hurt us as much as Samson had hurt God or hurt his parents in the decisions that he made, most of us would respond with, huh, no. But God's response is always different than our response. While we may not be as quick to forgive, God is so quick to forgive you and me. That's the beauty of grace. That's the amazing grace that God gives to each one of us. When we cry out to him, no matter how far we've gone, God says, I am there. So ultimately, we can never be too far for God to be able to save us, for God to be able to pull us out. And in those moments that Samson was next to the pillars and he asked God to remember him one more time, God gave him strength. And Samson took out more Philistines that day than he had in his entire life. Now, whether that was part of God's plan or whether it was just the result of the poor decisions, ultimately, this is what we must remember. God never left Samson. God was right there with him. And even though he may have lost his strength because of the decisions that he made, he didn't lose God. He was never too far from his Savior. While many of us cling to those words and knowing that we're not too far from our Savior, that even when we've made some of the worst decisions that we could make, our God is right there to redeem us, to restore us, to cleanse us. I mean, that's why Jesus went to the cross, so that he could wash us clean and reconcile us back to our God. I want to take a moment as well to encourage those of you 
who have done your very best to raise your children. And for whatever reason, they have made choices that are not glorifying God. I know as moms, you have put in your blood, sweat, tears, and prayers that your children would have a relationship with Jesus, that they would have a wonderful connection with God's church. I know that you have put forth so much effort and energy, and yet still, children sometimes make bad choices. But I want to remind you today that it's not you, that we all have our own choices to make. And I also want to remind you that Jesus wants them saved even more than you do. So as you lift them up in prayer, as you spend time on your knees, don't give up. Keep lifting them up. Allow God to use circumstances around them to show them just how much he loves them, to show them that they are not too far. I don't know what's going to happen as time goes on in this world, but I do know this, God is with us. They are chosen just as you have been chosen, just as I have been chosen. God is equipping them and he's equipping me and he's equipping you. And even when we make mistakes and even when we make bad choices to a point that we think that there's no going back, when we cry out, Jesus, save me, or God, remember me, he's right there because God is never too far. Thank you so much for joining us today. I just want to remind you, God is not done with you yet. He still has great plans for you. He has chosen you. He will equip you. And no matter where you are, you are never too far to have God's call on your life. Now, if you've been searching for a church home and you live in the Billings or the Bridger areas, we would love for you to join us. You can find us online at billingsadventist.com or bridgeradventist.org and contact us. We'd love to hear from you. Until we meet again, may God bless you abundantly.